so this is chapter 21, writing ggplot2 extensions. This is a little bit bigger. So learning objectives for this chapter are how to overcome the challenge of a particular plot and learn how to extend the ggplot2 in different ways. Uh, in this chapter, we see how to extend the graphics of a plot. In particular, we will see how the following layers and other parts of the a plot are composed and where the changes can be applied. So we know that we have some layers that uh, compose a plot, such as a teams, stats, geoms, cohorts. Then we can uh, change scales, position, add facets, and then finally guide. So anything uh, within this list can be modified, customized uh, from the inside of a ggplot uh, function. So the first thing that, could, mm, that has been mentioned as the most uh, customized one uh, are the teams layers. So how about creating new team elements? Uh, in ggplot2, the team base is team gray. And then there is another example in the chapter showing a modification made on team B white to obtain the minimum. And there you can see where the change happened basically. So the team function, it's the easiest part of a plot that can be modified. Um, if you use the print function, with inside the team, uh, the selected team that you want to would like to modify, you can see it's all its specifications. And then if it's already a modification, you'll find this uh, percent plus replace percent sign uh, operator that uh, um, put evidence on the changes where the change is applied. So this operator shows where the substitution have taken place. For example, here I show like three team, teams, them gray, be white, and minimum. So you, as you can see, there, there's some differences. Uh, if we see, for example, print, and then the team function that we like to modify, we can um, identify this replace operator. In fact, for example, if I do that on B white, uh, it starts uh, from the team gray, okay? And uh, here you find the replace operator. So starting from this point, what changes is the panel background element, which is now white. We can see from gray to minimal. We are doing B white, sorry. So from gray makes sense. <laughs> so from gray to B white. So uh, the, the, the background is now white, no colors in the grids. Uh, and so there you can uh, identify all the elements to, uh, to see what are the differences from the starting point, which is this, okay? So obviously a team is a function uh, as, um, with, with some baselines, uh, um, options, and then uh, specification from its start uh, and then when you identify the position of the replace operator you see that something changed from the other. so for example then if we see the term minimal which is this one here 
we can see that this starts from team B white. Okay, so D replace operator is here, and then there's some elements. So this axis takes is now element blank, so you can see it, and, and so on and so forth. These are the elements that basically change it. So while if uh, we call the function print the minimal with the uh, brackets, R shows something different than if you just do print and the minimal without the brackets. So if we do the brackets, we can see all the options set available for the function, for this function here. In general, if you want to make a modification to an existing theme, uh, the general approach is to simply use the theme function uh, while setting complete to, and then add some modification. But we are aiming um, to um, inside modification of a theme function. So um, this is maybe belongs to a new package or so a little bit more sophisticated things. Another layer that can be extended with ggplot uh, in ggplot2 is the stats layer. So extending stats is one of the most useful ways to extend the capabilities of ggplot2. Stats are purely about data transformations. So we know what stats does. Uh, then we, we can use stats and specify some geoms, uh, but basically creating new stats, um, start with this extension, is done with this extension function, the compute function and the setup function. June uh, has already mentioned uh, very thoroughly the, all about this, these things. But uh, what I can uh, mention is in the chapter is that, that they show the logic. So where they go from and then to. So basically the logic of a start in this case of a start because all the, the other layers have a slightly different specification uh, besides what others have the same as this one here. So the logic of a stat is made of subsequent call, calls such as this one, the, uh, this one here. There is a compute layer and then a compute panel and then a compute group. Okay, so these are the elements you can uh, basically modify. Then, uh, for example, the compute layer, what does is to split the data by the panel column and then call compute panel and then reassemble the result. Compute panel split the panel data in the compute column instead of the panel column and then call the compute group, this one here, and reassemble the result. So finally, compute group does group transformation. The suggestion in the, in the book is in general, the transformation is done to single group starting at the compute group level. So this is not, um, so that, mm, doing this into practice, uh, maybe June would be more, um, clear uh, if you have any question about this thing. So before uh, compute function calls, uh, there are setups. Basically, these are the compute function and it suggests you to start from this because each one of those call each other on a sequence. So you modify this and when it's called, everything it's it, there is a group transformation. Uh, but before the compute function uh, act, there is a setup. So, for, which are functions that allow the, the start to react 
and modify itself in response to the given parameters. So basically, you have a setup function for parameters and for data. Uh, the, the setup function receives the parameters input as well as receives the modified parameters, both for parameters and for data. So you can modify this. this you, so they receive the modification basically, and then returns a modified list of parameters or a modified layer of data. I don't know if you have any questions, maybe. So just uh, jump in if you have any questions, if you want to say anything you want to say. Sometime with uh, related stats, said the book, all that is necessary is to make a subclass and provide new setup params or setup data methods. So if we use the print function with stat being brackets, we can see that the, for example, the, there are there's some, some specifications that belongs to um, the stat bin function, such as bin null uh, or position stack. And then they can adjust it, modify it as, as needed. So in general, uh, as well, we can use geoms and making stats or using stats with geoms. So geoms are more, more, more common, uh, use it more frequently than stats, but you know you can use both somehow. They have a slightly different syntax. So making why making a new geom? Might be useful uh, because no, the, there is a case with not magnificent uh, data by any current geoms. So you want to make a new one for that can be more suitable, uh, making your data uh, standing out better. Or because the mm, you want to combine the output of multiple geoms. So you like you might want to make a new geoms that combine the output with multiple, multiple geoms. Or maybe there's a need for uh, grubs, not currently available from existing geoms. So the logic of a geom is made of subsequent calls as well. So if you are in mind, ourselves just um, the the calls for um, oopsie for stats so we use compute layer now we are using draw layer because stats basically does a computation uh, it says a purely data transformation. So you are computing something while geoms, uh, it's a more like logic of uh, drawing um, some, some uh, data specifications. So you use this function draw layer, draw panel and draw group in sequence this way as well as before implementation is easier for draw group as well as compute group before. So you now have set up params as well as before and set up data. Uh, they, they, they act before the draw as well as uh, in start the, the setup act before the compute function. So, an example um, is, is June has said. So when in, in when you, if you open, for example, if I share my R here and um, um, I, I call something like this, 
okay, in the geom spoke. Okay. So now this uh, uh, type of function, it's a wrapper function, okay? And it is a GG proto. Uh, these are the interesting function that you find when you type geom and you have the list of the things. If you go at the bottom of this list, you find some of this geom spoke, for example. So you see that he said, if you are creating a new geom, start a position or scale in another package, you'll need to extend from ggplot to geom or start a position, okay, or scale. If we do like, F1, we can see that um, okay, for example, if I do this uh, geom. Uh, where is this book? Okay. So now it says uh, this is a uh, base. Can you see it? Okay, so this uh, base ggproto classes for ggpro2, uh, and it gives you some, some information how to uh, use it. So each of the geom object is a ggproto object, this descend from the top level geom, and it implements various methods in the field. And so you can see that you can, for example, in draw panel, uh, draw group, uh, each one is called uh, a GG product, each one. So you might find some, some, some interesting information uh, in here for, for all the um, layer that you would like to make a modification to. Okay, so going back uh, where we were, so this is a ggproto method, it's a wrapper function and does some uh, specification of it. So in the example for um, such a, for example, the geom smooth, it's a combination of a geom line and a geom ribbon. So basically here you can see that if we preparing the data for each of this geom inside the draw function, and we do like the geom smooth and draw group. So we can see, because we said that we, we need to start from the group, we can see that there is a ribbon and transform the data. There is the path, uh, there is a minimum, max, so all, all the things that up inside this the, the, the geom smooth. What this is what the ggproto method applied uh, to in this case to the geom smooth function. Then same things uh, for chords. Again, chords are belonging to drawing things uh, in ggplot2, so with data. Uh, such an example is called Cartesian, rescaling the position of data. 
so called takes care of rendering the access, the access labels and uh, panel foreground and background. And it can intercept both the layer data and the facet layout and modify it with this function. So we have draw now and transform. Okay, so as well as before, when we search for geom, we can find this uh, ggproto. Now it's a chord Cartesian. So if I go back to here and I do chord. Cartesian is here. The ggproto is this one here. It's still the same page as before. So the help page is the same for all the, the layers. So even for, for this, uh, uh, the, you, you can find some, some information and we can see that this is again a wrapper function. What the uh, chord uh, Cartesian function does is the transforming the position. So, so basically that uh, in the, of the data, the panel and rescaling the things. Um, if we do, for example, pre, use the print function on core, the simple features, you can see what is shown, it's the entire specification of the core, the simple features. So it is a function, uh, specify its limb, um, y limb, the limitation can be expanded and so on and so forth. So all the, the things, all the conditions specified uh, if something happen um, or else. Uh, and finally, the ggproto. So what you find the chord SF proto thing that you use. So this is basically what's happened uh, and where are the modifications that you, uh, where, where you can locate the thing to modify. Uh, then there's the scales, uh, for example, uh, build a wrapper for a new palette to an existing scale, for example, that may be the reason for making a modification. This is done by providing a new palette scale into the relevant basic scale. You can see this with this print function again on scale field buildings, if you want to, to have a look at that without the brackets. And you see that it is a continuous scale modification. Okay. And uh, what's happened is inside the aesthetics, uh, mm, uh, it's aside. The, this is not inside the aesthetics because these are the aesthetics. And then you specify which colors you want to uh, use. Um, and then uh, this is the the basic. The, these are the basic option of uh, of the function. And then, for example, as you can see here, the the gradient number of palette. It's really this palette it goes from alpha. You can specify the transparency, where to begin, where to end, the direction, the option, uh, and all the other things. So we have done, the, the chapter is finished basically, uh, unless you have some, some other questions or you want to discuss anything you would like to discuss. The, the final uh, uh, three uh, layers are position, facet, and guides. There is no much uh, to say beside the fact that the same as before, you have, for example, for position, 
you have compute function. Uh, for example, for facet, again, there is a compute and a map methods. And then finally for guides, it doesn't mention anything, but it reminds you to look at what is a ggproto. Okay, so here I put the example June mentioned, um, which is again, very interesting because you can see I will ask some questions last uh, week about how to make this effectively, um, how to define a ggproto, how to make the modification. So here there's a, uh, an example and uh, that's it. Uh, this is all um, about this chapter for me. Uh, so I don't know if you have any any questions uh, or we can just um, uh, yeah. okay. So thank you, June, because uh, you know you have given me some some uh, like idea of how to to make these changes, but still I've got lots of doubts. So basically, uh, when I'm going to attempt to do this modification, I might need again um, some some further explanations because uh, it's not so from theory to practice there the, there is some some. Uh, distance, some differences. Okay. If you don't have any questions, uh, I think we can, um, uh, it, th this chapter is done. Um, there is not mm, more to say beside the fact that I can add some uh, um, interesting resources and I, I put them in the chat. Okay, that's yeah, that's all good. That's all right. I think we can we can drop up early steps. Oh, done. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I like to see the other uh, the, the the case study, uh, which which uh, should be uh, very interesting as well. Yeah. So um, I don't know if we can uh, maybe do. Uh, some some uh, some of these things uh, to see how how effectively can can be done basically so, yeah okay thank you yeah thank you so much Federico for uh, the continuing the discussion thank you so much thank you yeah we'll meet uh, next week and hopefully wrap up take up the last chapter then. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah, see you everyone next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.